Thanks for joining us. I'm Marlon Bowling with a look at our ag commodity trade. We welcome to the show our resident expert just down the street. We have Chris Swift with us. He's with Swift Trading Incorporated right here in Nashville. How are you? I'm doing great, Marlon. How about yourself? Hope you had a good Father's Day. Oh, I did indeed. And you? Excellent. Yes. Right. Yeah, can't complain at all. Good. Now, this weather is a different story in parts of the country. Uh, yes. It kind of ruined a lot of uh, fathers that are in agriculture. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about this. Okay. Uh, and let's look at the markets and then talk about what I can't believe this is yeah. weather this late in the season, and we're not talking dryness either. Right, it's a different right. story. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what the corn market is doing right now. We are higher, but only a penny and a half on the July now. We really came off our overnight highs by about a dime. We're at 454 and a half. September, two and three quarters higher now, and December is now four higher at 467 and a half. If you look at the soybean trade here, you have the July 12 and a quarter higher at 909, November up 12 and a quarter at 935 and three quarters, obviously taking charge here today. On the wheat trade in Chicago, we have July now three quarters higher at 539 and a quarter, really quieting down from the overnight session. We're off our overnight high by a dime. And Kansas City wheat, you have that July contract there now trading three and a quarter higher at 479 and a half. And Minneapolis wheat. We have the July contract currently just one tick higher at 563 and, and a half at the present time. Deferreds are all weaker than Minneapolis wheat there. So what's going on here, Chris? Everything really coming down off its overnight highs? Are they worried about the report coming out this afternoon or what? Well, I think the progress report will show at least some more planting in. We don't know how good a yields or, or harvested acres there will be just yet. But what I have a sneaky feeling you'll see is maybe a, a 90 or 91 percent total planted now. And anything after this just most likely won't won't be make a yield or be cut for silage or something. So you get today's report. And then next Friday, you get the... Uh, the uh, acres planted report, and that's what everybody's going to pretty much wait and see. So we may have two weeks of some consolidating trade here until we get to that, and everybody gets a more definitive idea of what that actual acre number is going to be. And and today's numbers are going to be very it, it it'll vary based on interpretation, won't it? Because the the uh, survey takers can just kind of say, well, that's all they expect to plant, so well, they're done. They, they can, and, and with the prevent plant, we don't know really how many acres were put under the prevent plant, so there'll be some dis discrepancies right, between right. those two. So I think as we move forward, we tend to iron those discrepancies out, but it'll be interesting to see if you got more acres planted than what we thought we did, or there was greater numbers of prevent plant acres. So what if you have a lot of old crop grain? around that you haven't moved or haven't been able to move yet. What do you do with that with prices like this? You sell it. You sell it. The basis has narrowed up significantly as well as the spreads between the contract months. So you've seen the spread between July and September narrow up significantly. So there's no point in really carrying it unless you want to make one to three cents more in that spread between the two months. Go ahead and sell it. Your basis is narrowed up to you. You're getting a little bit higher cash price for it, and there's not that much premium to uh, to uh, encourage you to store it. Now, isn't that different, though, if you're by the major river routes? I heard the basis there was kind of widening out because they can't and, get rid of it. Right, and it, and it could be. Uh, they've had some of the issues with the floods and everything. They just they can't get rid of it. I, right. I knew one, it may have been a week ago, but they did a force majeure on it because they just couldn't move move grain out of it. Wow, fascinating stuff. Okay, uh, we'll come back here in a moment okay. and we'll talk about livestock. All right. I know you like to talk oh, about yes. cattle. So we'll uh, come back in just a moment. We'll have more with Chris Swift on the other side of these messages. Come on back. His most important network. Let's talk livestock with Chris Swift of Swift Trading Incorporated right here in Nashville. He joins us in studio today. And let's go ahead and take a look at our live prices, beginning with live cattle trade in Chicago. Here we go with the August contract. We'll start there since we're in June right now. August is 57 higher. We're now at 104.85 and October 30 higher at 105.78. So they have come up uh, roughly about 50, 60 cents or so off of their uh, uh, earlier lows this morning. We have December 17 higher. Let's take a look at the feeder cattle market. And now on the feeders, we had those triple digit losses earlier on. Now they've come off of that a little bit. August now down 80 at 134.72. So there again, it's off of its earlier low by about 60 cents. 
September down 83 at 134.97. Lean hog trade today after two uh, two dollar losses on Friday. We have the August contract now 15 higher at 80.78, but the deferreds are weaker, anywhere from uh, 60 to 70 cents lower from October through February of next year. So. Things kind of firming up a little bit. At the same time, the corn is easing a little bit. <laughs> you don't suspect a little correlation there, do you? Just a little bit, probably, but not a, a great deal. Bit. So, yeah. All right. So how much is, is this uh, feeder cattle market tied to the corn right uh, now? Right now, it's pretty tight to it. Um, you know, we had an initial drop in the feeder cattle prices back late in the fall of the year that carried through to the first of this. Then we, you know, kind of bolstered feeder cattle prices up into the April of this year, and then they hit them really hard again. And we didn't have the corn issues by then. So now that we already had some issues with the feeder cattle, this corn is just exaggerating those. Okay, live cattle, uh, technically speaking, when you look at the charts, they have been holding their own maybe a little better than what the feeder cattle have. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's going to change at all or not? Um, it will eventually, but right now, probably the next three or four weeks, we, we just came off of Father's Day. We'll be anxious to see what kind of movement we had there. We've got the 4th of July still coming up. Right. And and the cattle in the feed yards are very current right now. Um, this week, cattle on feed report may show a 101 or 100 percent on feed so we're very current on there our weights are down they'll start climbing from this point but they're down relatively low so I think we've done a really good job at keeping current on the fat cattle market and that may start to support our, our cash prices a little better you think placements will be high again no I think placements one? will be maybe 95 percent oh, really and, uh, yeah yeah I think they'll be oh, lower okay. so uh, they didn't show very much movement there was about a 20 to 30 percent less movement in total feeder cattle and stocker receipts for the month of May so I, I think you'll be down probably about 93 to 95 percent placed. And even though we have ASF all around the globe, uh, we're still uh, battling big supplies. Yeah, right? hogs, yeah, tons of it. So, All right, all kinds of uh, hog uh, production here in the U.S. here this and, year. And big right? news on China. I mean, uh, I watched just before I came in here, there's still, it, it is a terrible situation, and I cannot tell you why U.S. pork is not benefiting from that. Yeah, it's it's an unusual situation. All kinds of potential, but it just it's nobody just not quite like that there yet. That's yeah. right. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming. Absolutely, it. always a pleasure. Chris Swift of Swift Trading Incorporated, right here in Nashville. Jen, All right. Thank you. As always, gentlemen, thank you very much for the mm -hmm. update this morning.